And thank you very much indeed for joining us. This is New Day Live on TV3. And my guests have joined me here. The Honorable Mohamed Abdullah says is MP for Mion constituency in the Northern Region. Honorable, welcome and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Assalam. Alaikum salam. And uh, Sir Eric Chum is a member of the NPP's communication team. Chief, good morning and deepest condolences to you. Good morning, thank you. And um, I think that to all of us, mm -hmm. um, it's a, a terrible, terrible uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, but like we all say, um, as Christians and as believers, we believe that uh, the good Lord would uh, keep him mm -hmm. um, in his bosom. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, uh, I think that uh, is one of those things that um, in life we all know that it's inevitable. But mm. when it does happen, uh, it's something that is extremely difficult to uh, to comprehend. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I think that, again, we need to almost be able to derive some lessons from the, the man that he was. I think that we've, de we've developed this pension for singing praises of mm. individuals after they've actually departed. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it from even the political space, uh, everybody from mm. even from our friends on the other side are uh, saying all sorts of fantastic things about And that's what probably should uh, prevail. Mm. It should be more of the norm than the exception. Um, so I think that we all have to take lessons from, from this. All right. And we wish uh, to, of course, express our heartfelt condolences to the immediate family mm -hmm. and even the bigger family, mm -hmm. that is the MPP fraternity okay. and the political fraternity and Ghanaians at large. <coughs> right. Happy birthday to my own brother and senior colleague here, Stephen and T. It's your birthday today. And uh, if it's your birthday as well, happy birthday to you. Live long and... Uh, keep impacting society. But page six of the Daily Guide newspaper says, a nasty scene was enacted in the full glare of eyewitnesses last Wednesday at Sakaman in Accra when some police personnel attacked their counterparts from the Ghana Immigration Service and freed some foreigners who had been arrested by the latter. Armed cops in a service vehicle from the Odoko police station and some of them clutching AK-47s amid verbal attacks forcefully stopped immigration officers from carrying out their statutory functions. They prevented the immigration officers from taking away foreigners suspected to be involved in internet fraud and without passports as required by law. They claimed that the foreigners uh, were abusing their status by engaging activities in breach of the law and we're taking them to the office for further investigation. Then the police step in and they free, literally, uh, these men who the immigration service says are wronging the law, offending the law. What kind of collaboration should we have? First of all, let me ask you, what does this say to you in terms of the collaborative effort that we've been talking about since forever? Uh, good morning to you, Jenny. Good morning to my colleague here. Good morning to our viewers. It's a very disturbing story. Mm. It clearly demonstrates that there's no some coordination amongst these uh, um, state security institutions. And mm. that is worrying. This is not the first time that we are witnessing a sort of a clash uh, uh, between uh, uh, security institutions. It has often been between the police mm. and, the, and the army. Uh, this time it has extended to the Ghana Immigration uh, mm -hmm. uh, Service. It is a very regrettable uh, uh, situation. I expect the national security mm. outfit to uh, step in to see how they can uh, um, ensure some collaboration among these this, uh, security institutions. Mm. Mm. What I don't know exactly is whether the police took custody of, 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 of these men mm. who were alleged to have wronged the law. Mm. Mm. And then they, they were them freed, literally. That and, is, that and, is, that and the story bad. says, but we TV3 show that perhaps we have the visuals, we could toss them on your screens right now. But what we understand is that when they were arrested, one of them called a cop friend of, of his. And then in no time, the, the cop arrived with vehicles and arms and freed them, literally, you know. That is worrying mm. and sends a very bad, bad signal. You know, it only goes to confirm uh, the the perception mm -hmm. that some of these um, um, criminals there you have are, it on your screen some of these uh, criminals uh, 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 do engage our our security uh, officers mm -hmm. and that sometimes they 
they aid them to commit the crimes that they do. Mm. Because why would you be arrested then you call a police officer, of, uh, a friend of yours, right. who now comes there with, with, his, with his colleague to free you? I mean, it raises questions of, 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 of the police officer mm. um, being part of the, of the, of the, of the syndicate, right. being part of, mm. of, of the crime. And so I expect the Ghana Police Service to carry out a thorough investigations into the matter. Mm. Then it should, it should be a matter of concern to the national security outfit that let us find out if the police officer who was called has some relationship with the with the with the four who were who were arrested but whatever the case is we need these institutions to collaborate you know um, it is not it doesn't send a good sign to the the, the uh, civilian society mm -hmm. to see some uh, security agencies from different backgrounds clash in such a mm -hmm. a, 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 a manner mm -hmm. and so i hope that uh, the police uh, uh, service would speak to the matter mm -hmm. Um, some investigations will be carried in, into it. The worrying trend is that any time the police are asked to carry out investigations of this, of this nature, mm. then they come out to exonerate uh, 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 their men. That is also a worrying, a worrying, a worrying, a worrying trend. Mm. But I think that the national security should take deep interest in this matter. Mm. They should investigate it. Let us know if the police, if the police, at least the person who was called, okay. the officer who was called, mm. if he's part of the conspiracy okay. for, 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 for them to perpetrate their, mm. their crime. Eric, the, the, the intelligence unit of the Immigration Service picked up Intel. They went to effect this arrest or the operation because one, it was established that these guys do not have a passport and so their stay here was illegal or unlawful. And then they get called and does this substantiate the school of thought that people have the police literally in their pockets? Well, anyway, good morning once again. Good morning to uh, my friend, uh, Honorable here, and to all the viewers uh, as well. Um, it's a worrying trend. Mm. Um, I think that there's absolutely no justification uh, for such things to happen, regardless of what the issues are. Mm. And I believe strongly that um, even though I don't have the, the full um, overview of what is meant to happen in terms of collaboration mm. between mm. the police and uh, the immigration service, right. I think that there is definitely some kind of working protocols that mm -hmm. would exist in terms of when issues of this nature does crop up. Mm. So for it to get to this stage, really, for me, it's extremely uh, regrettable. It's something mm -hmm. that should not be encouraged. Mm -hmm. I back the call that it has to be investigated. And then the various corporates should actually be held accountable so that it serves as a deterrent uh, for other people as well. This mm -hmm. is not the first time that we've had some kind of uh, clashes between the various uh, arms of the security mm -hmm. um, apparatus. Mm -hmm. You've had incidents where uh, police and army officers have uh, right. clashed, have clashed. and mm. they've, they've gone into fights and all of those things. So it's not something that we can countenance. It's not something that anybody can find any real mm. justification mm. for, uh, especially to the point where guns are being welded and they are pushing each other mm. and sending a signal that in fact the immigration officers didn't want to retaliate so they had to yeah sending know. sending a signal that if you you have a a, a police friend mm. uh and you get into trouble uh you can basically uh, come out of it and right. it's, it's it's ridiculous i think that it's not something that mm. we should uh <coughs> support at all mm. again i think that the uh various agencies responsible would have to act with dispatch. Uh, mm. This happened yesterday. Um, I haven't um, heard any new uh, details of the matter, but I think that as we speak, uh, investigations are well underway to deal with the issue. Mm. And even the, the crux of the matter, which is if these individuals are here illegally and they are pur purported to be indulging in some kind of illegal activities, mm -hmm. then they are meant to also be held right. liable and accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't mm -hmm. allow uh, that kind of situation to fester where people lose confidence in mm -hmm. our security apparatus. That mm -hmm. is what actually uh, would emanate into 
people taking the law into their own right, hands and right. uh, mob mm -hmm. actions and vigilantism and all of those things. So mm -hmm. it's imperative that the agencies that are mandated to protect the people of this country do so, do their work. You see, I keep making this point all the time that uh, we have taken the easy way out. So mm -hmm. even when it comes mm -hmm. to the media, uh, the first thing is that, oh, is a, is a polit politician, mm -hmm. right? But if you take the double politicians that we have in this country, or people who are the helms of affairs in terms of the political um, uh, appointments, for instance, mm -hmm. and let's assume that all of them are as lousy as we claim, mm -hmm. and everybody else, police, army, immigration, mm -hmm. people in the public sector, the teachers, the doctors, the nurses, that... And all these people that we use our taxpayers' money mm -hmm. to pay mm. are able to do what they are meant to do, they are mandated right. to do. We won't find ourselves in this kind of situation anymore. Hmm. So really, I, I feel that those, perpetu those four or five police officers, including even the immigration officer, because right. it, it's important that you get to the, the, whole the, story, the bottom the whole story. of the mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. to see if due process was followed, if there's an existing protocol that as this between the police and immigration service <laughs> in terms of when these issues crop up, then we will get to the bottom of it. And if there's not an established protocol, mm. then some has to be done in, in, in earnest. Okay. So that we'll be able to deal with this issue and it doesn't happen again. Most grateful. Thank you very much. Page three of the Daily Guide says, Akufuado jabs NDC. And President Akufuado says, the opposition National Democratic Congress is uh, desperate to come back to power in order to create, loot and share uh, the, the nomenclature that came from the Supreme Court. The president, who is on a three-day visit to the Eastern region, believes that the only reason why the NDC is desperate to come back to power is to perpetrate endemic corruption. According to the president, as long as the MPP exists, the NDC would never come to power. And I should all support the party and Ghanaians to reject them since they have nothing to offer. Mo, it, it looks as if the campaigns have begun already two years ahead of the elections. Uh, first of all, the job and what you think about it. Is that what we need at this point? That's not what we need at this time of, mm. uh, our, of our country. What we need immediately is to make sure that we don't have them so back. What we need immediately is, the, uh, is for the president and the government mm. to work to uh, generate jobs for the teeming unemployed youth of this country mm. because these were some of the things that they pledged. What we need at this time is for Mr. President and the government Mm. to work to stop the bleeding of our national purse, the, the open tifery that we are witnessing is what we want Mr. President to, to look at. Do you at. have evidence oh. to confirm this thievery that you are pointing to? Well, if you have lived in this country, mm. you know, corruption is largely um, um, uh, perceived because okay. in the case of, of corruption, both the, the giver and the receiver are both guilty okay they conspire to commit that crime and mm. so don't expect to see a corrupt act you know um, evidence mm. or admitted by either the giver or the receiver mm. unless in a case where the case is tested in court and the court rules mm. and so it's largely based on perception that is why the ghana integrity initiative would would normally base their work on corruption perception mm. if you have lived in this country you will come to a conclusion mm. that what we have today in Ghana is not corruption. It is open to free. Mm. We have a case where a government would pay an amount of 1.4 million US dollars mm. to kill the GVG for work, for work not done mm. for almost six months and nobody talks about it. You talk about it and you attack as, 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 as people who are just interested in, 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 in political power. Mm -hmm. we, we are in this country where Kredita Japan, a member mm. of the MPP, a sitting member of parliament mm. on the ticket of the MPP mm. alleges that when you go to the Flagstaff House to see the president, mm. investors who go there to see the president are required to pay an amount of 20,000 Ghana. Was he able to prove that? Nobody has denied that. Mm. In fact, if I were mm. Mr. President, I would have taken steps to exonerate myself that he hasn't done. Mm. Like I, I said earlier, corruption is largely based on perception. And so we don't need these political jabs at this time from, mm. from the president. He is being maintained by the taxpayer. He is not the flag bearer of the MPP. Mm -hmm. He is now the president of the republic, mm -hmm. maintained by the taxpayer, and must concentrate on delivering the very goods and services that he pledged to do and for which he is paid to do. 
And for you to say that, as far as the MPP is concerned, the NDC will not come to power. Why? It says we, because you want to come we and don't depend, and share. The NDC will not depend on the MPP to come to power. We will depend on the Ghanaian and not the MPP as a political party. And the last election, Do you they, ever expect, they whipped you. You see, if you, if you, if you... Is that not if, a fact? If you are minded to go and look at the 1996 okay. mm, presidential and parliamentary results, mm. you will know that when you lose elections by some huge figures, it does not in any way okay. indicate that you cannot win power again. Mm. Go and look at the 1996 electoral results mm. and you will know the defeat that was handed to uh, President Kufo, then candidate Kufo and the MPP. Mm. And yet they were able to win power in 2000. What I'm saying mm. is that Mr. President should concentrate okay. on delivering the very goods and services mm. that he pledged to do. Mm. In fact, he won power because he had promised to do a factory in every district. He had promised to do a dam in, 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 in all villages. Okay. He had promised mm. to give one million US dollars to every constituency for every year. Mm. He had promised to end the youth unemployment. He had promised to end corruption. These are the things that he should be addressing and not engage in this. Is he not addressing petty. them? He's not. Oh, he's, really? not. he's not. Okay. He's not. Mm. You are aware that um, more Ghanaians are losing jobs under President Akufuado. You are aware that banks have collapsed under him. Mm -hmm. You are aware that contractors are not being paid. They are selling out their, their equipments to be able to, to defray their debts with their banks. The, there's you there's some two million, two million, two million, uh, two billion that's been you know, set out to pay the contractors. Have they paid them? I said they will pay them. Have they paid them? The MPP is believe. almost the MPP is almost two years, mm. two years in government. Mm. Mind you, when they talk about two billion to pay to pay contractors and when they depend solely on a Sino Hydro two billion to do infrastructure, I I I I I I I, I begin to uh, to wonder how they think and how they act. Why? In the health sector alone, President Mahama spent over two billion US dollars mm. in the health mm. sector alone. Mm. And so if you are depending on two billion to do all manner of things that you claim you want to do and you think the Ghanaian should 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 clap for you, I am saying that we don't need these petty partisan jabs from Mr. President. Okay. What we need from him is to offer leadership okay. that would ameliorate mm. the suffering of the Ghanaian. The very Ghanaian that they said was suffering is still suffering, perhaps more than they were suffering under President Mahama. Mm. What we need is for the president to engage, to engage okay. in activities and public utterances okay. that would rally us together around his policies. Okay. That he's not doing. He's not providing leadership, and that is worrying. Why? Go and look at their 2019 budget. The, the Eastern University is look, coming up, and it says oh, it Eastern, will stay there. Eastern the University, deal. Eastern University, mm. the University for 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 uh, 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 Environment and Sustainable uh, Development. Mm. It is the baby of President Mahama and the NDC. The law was passed by us, mm. funding secured by by us, and so when you now go to Eastern Region, and you want to claim credit for air, mm. it is worrying. It is a fact, and you know. Mm that the university was initiated mm. by the government of President Mahama and the NDC. And, that and, and they, they are, are continuing, they are continuing. you and should so, give them credit. And so, and so, and so, if we started an action, mm. made the law to establish a university, secure the funding for it, mm. all that they did was to make an attempt to relocate that university, because of the backlash. The president said there's, there's oh, nothing there was like that. an attempt. The minister was, was, said was, was in false. parliament. I say the Minister for Education was in Parliament mm. to give credence to that. They have only retracted because of the backlash. And so I'm saying that we don't need this thing. Why? If the President says that the NDC wants to come back because we want to come and uh, create loot and share, mm. is it why he came into power? All the allegations that he made mm. against the NDC, why are they not able to substantiate them and to prosecute? In any case, mm. corruption. Okay. Wrap corruption. Up Let Eric the other have name a for MPP okay. is corruption. Is it? If you are asked to go and bring corruption, just go and bring Akufuado and Baumia, and that, you have found corruption. That's not. That's not. Uh, and you have found corruption. That's not a decent thing to say. What makes it not not decent? Of the land. What makes it not decent that you are a sitting president, mm. that a leading citizen. When I say a leading citizen, somebody who is well known, Mr. Nyentechi, the president of the Ghana Football Association, the immediate past, mm. says that. If you are able to give the president some five million Ghana, five, some five million dollars, he was blowing hot air. Blowing hot air. 
you think Mr. Nyentechi would take flight to Dubai, mm. pay his air ticket in and out, go and uh, launch into a hotel just to blow some hot air and come back? Okay. You think that will happen? Thank you. That Mr. Nyentechi says that no, when you, you pay have, $5 million dollars to President Akufa, you, have, you, you can own the entire Ghana? Thank you. Eric, step in for me. The president says the NDC seeks to come back to create loot and share. They are only peddling falsehood. And as long as he here, the MPP exists, the NDC will never ever come to power. My question to him is: Do we need these at this time? <laughs> well, uh, I think that he <laughs> probably should have done my my job for me by asking him some probing questions. But I, I will do that. You didn't hear <coughs> probing questions. So you see, you didn't hear probing questions. No, but is he, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that he went that route, and the display that he has actually showcased this morning mm. would buttress the president's point that the NDC one, they are not ready to uh, come back to power mm. and they don't really have anything to offer because there was a lot of incoherence in what he was saying. And I'll deal with the issues. He started with the angle that corruption in itself, it's a perception. Mm. And that for you to be able to categorically state that uh, these things that happen, it had to go to, to court. It has to be established by a court of competent jurisdiction. Is that not the case? Is that not what he said? Mm. Well, you are making now, references to me. Uh, yeah, but you said that it has to be, yeah, but be it's, it's a mere uh, it's, it's a no, perception and all of that. I, I have, mere mere I have mere mere let me finish. I was very please. quiet. I was extremely quiet. No, 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 I was quiet. I was quiet. But to be fair to him, I was very quiet. I don't have a problem. But you have a pen and paper, so note your, note your. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Eric. Please have your. And I'll still, I'll still make my point. The NDC, compared to the MPP, comparatively, when it comes to the issues to do with corruption. And I would, I would basically um, talk about two individuals. The founder of the NDC, who is president, former president Jerry John Rollins, had on many occasions stated categorically that the NDC's spate and the way that they superintended over corruption in this country took this country to an abyss. When somebody says an abyss, it's probably the, most, the deepest hole that you can find. Mm -hmm. Martin Amidu, on record, had said that former President John Mahama was being investigated by a president, a sitting president at the time, mm -hmm. late former president. That's why you were, you were yeah, elected yeah, into but office I, on just, the basis of change. Listen, listen, you see, let me, let me. You, let you me. have not answered my Jenny, question. Jenny, my question Jenny, to you, and Jenny, I asked him my question. Jenny, Jenny, I'm just making, uh, Eric, I'm just hold making on, a point. Eric, hold on for me. I, I asked him a question. Mm -hmm. I said, do we need these at this time? He said, no. no. But, but you see, the thing but, is that. And I've asked you the same question. You need to, you need to. What do we need? The president was on record stating what has been lies and untruth that has been peddled mm -hmm. by the NDC in relation to the university. Mm -hmm. That's right. right? That's and right. he went on to make the claim that all of these allegations mm -hmm. as to the, there's a, there was a ploy, there was an attempt to move the university mm -hmm. from its um, original intended location mm -hmm. to Bunsu. was not the case. Mm -hmm. And then he also went on to make the point that with all of these things, mm -hmm. it is an attack, a deliberate attack, being perpetrated by members of the NDC, mm -hmm. laced with propaganda, just to give the government a bad name, in an attempt to come back to <laughs> perpetrate and fester mm -hmm. the same acts of uh, create loot and share. And those, that lexicon, that thing that actually found its way into our body politic, mm -hmm. it didn't come from President Akufuad. Right. Now, so we can have a conversation. You see, I have absolutely no problem mm -hmm. or no qualms mm -hmm. with, for instance, my <laughs> colleague here mm -hmm. being a member of the NDC and say that I would defend the NDC to their hilt. But on a, pla on, on a platform like this, mm -hmm. when you actually feel emboldened enough to talk about issues to do with corruption, mm -hmm. when we have had so many, a plethora of examples. You see, I'm restraining myself because when I go his route, mm. 
it becomes almost a, a, as if that I am, we are, a new journalist will call it equalization. But and you're all doing that. that, that I'm, not, I'm not doing that. But I am go saying, the full hall. I am, I no, am, no, we am, go the full hall. I am saying that. Let, you don't have I, too much time I am saying to that. go the full hall. It is clear mm. from their actions that they're still reeling under the loss. They're still reeling <laughs> under the comfortable lead loss that they perpetrated on themselves. Listen, as we speak today, the NDC, after, after the after, aftermath of their recent national executive elections, mm. are in, 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 in chaos. They said they, they are not. They are actually going around saying that the elections itself were rigged. They said they, they, they were not. It's acts said, of it's just a few uh, disgruntled uh, fraudulent mm. activities that transpired on the ground and everything. I can show you clear evidence mm. of things that had happened. And these are the things that you need to deal with. You know, so for me, to sit on a platform like this and now start casting aspersions at the now person Eric, and now calling people power. names and all of those things. Listen, Eric, now you are you power. not aware? He, are he's, not, raised, he's raised some I, questions I, about uh, social interventions, some of the things that you promised. Yeah, but you, see, you have power no, now. It's like, you see, it's also clear mm. that it's either intentional okay. or he's just plain ignorant. It's mm -hmm. either two. Mm. Listen, what did he talk about? He was talking about the one district, one faction. Right. Now, if you feel that you, you can create a situation where you can discount these things happening across the country, mm. that is your own cup of tea. The president promised to uh, institute a program called IPEP, okay. which is the Infrastructure for Poverty Eradication Program. Mm. At the time, that was the, what, that's what he's referring to as a one million, one constituency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that at the time when we came into power, the whole process had to go into to parliament, the uh, development authorities have to be set up. Mm -hmm. So the special initiatives ministry had to start and activate the process. Mm -hmm. Every single district in this country has benefited from a, a project from the special initiatives mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you, the development authorities are in place. So as part of the budget for 2019, which was read and it mm has -hmm. been debated as you speak and is a member of parliament, now, the development authorities are going to take full control mm -hmm. of that particular program. Again, the president made promises whilst he was contesting mm -hmm. as a flag bearer that we will do free SHS. A free SHS is <laughs> activated as we 350 speak. 350 schools. Listen, he listen. Said he will that is it, them. again. That, that's not correct. That issue about 350 schools, and I'm glad that you brought it up. Right. It's and a figment of somebody's imagination. Okay. That 350 schools was in our 2012 manifesto. Okay. <laughs> right? Mm. Now, again, as we speak, as an action to support infrastructure development in the education sector, the GET Fund has been able to activate mm. 1.5 billion US dollars. Mm. Using the get fund, uh, the, the, the seed money that comes to the okay. what they call it, the statutory payment that comes to the get fund right. to support infrastructure in the education sector. Mm. Some of the schools that they were building, and we had to come and continue. Mm. Eighteen of these schools have been completed. You know, so you can do all the <laughs> politicking that you want. Mm. Listen. Why, why, issue, why does well, the MPP assume or President assume that the NDC just wants to come to power no, but see, to their, create loot their, and share? Perhaps actions, they want to write their wrongs. Their, their actions. Okay. For instance, yesterday, something really despicable happened. Their newly elected national organizer, okay. Joshua after Kaba. the demise of somebody who has served this nation, okay. somebody, regardless of the fact that it's an, a political yeah. opponent, okay. goes on a tangent that it's vile, it's uh, despicable, it's something that can... And so, these are people who are desperate. And so, if that, you even just, have... That's just one. Extremely... That's no, just but it's easy. No, it is not. It's it is not just that. Mm -hmm. It is not just okay, that. Your point has become your, 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 your uh, uh, arbitrary. Listen, you can you say that. And I was expecting that whilst he was saying all of this, you'd have asked him questions. Mm. Now, he did, made, did mention, I, I he made mention of something. Johnny, Eric, Eric I think you are being listen, unfair no, no, to me. No, no, I kept no, asking him it, questions. Listen, you're being unfair to I'll me. I'll tell you, you're I'll, being I'll, I'll, I'll round up and I'll ask him some specific questions. Listen. And who do you, who do you want me to answer? The way, yes, you, you, yes okay. I want you to answer. Exactly. In 2014, 
Okay. And he's talking about issues to do with the economy and promises that were made by the Now you are President equalizing. Trump. I'm not equalizing. I'm, I'm saying, in 2014, mm. President, former President Mahama came to the entire nation and told us that the meat has been eaten to the bone. Okay. Do you know what that means? Mm. Because before I, I, 2014, let me finish. Before 2014, the NDC came into power in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. By 2014, they had managed to pretend over an economy mm. that had been eaten to the bone. Okay. Then they decided that they would do what they call the homegrown policies. Mm. And these homegrown policies were things that we essentially didn't yeah, exist. So whilst we were going ahead and even having a conversation how to come out of it, mm. now they came out and said that they were going to the IMF to seek policy credibility. Do you realize you have I, answered my question? I am, to my, I, I, my simple I, no, question I, to you. No, 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 I'm just trying you, to... You have not answered, you have not answered I'm, my question. I am Eric, promising... my question yes. to you, and I've given you more than 10 minutes to speak. My, quest, is your question? my question to you is... But he went all over the place, no, and I'm trying to yes, deal but you have with had, the economic it, issues see, and issues Eric, to deal Eric, hold before Eric, the MPP administration has died. Eric, Eric, to hold deal on. the Eric, mess that we came you to, can't, to, to you inherit. can't rehash your party's manifesto on this platform. <laughs> I haven't. Now I give I him the same time yeah. I've given him. I watch the clock. Mm. I asked him a specific question. Do we need these at this time? He said no. no. And he went on to give. I've asked you that question. He said you wanted to build a, a background to it. And you've been building the background for twelve hours. <laughs> now let me let me give you a last chance. Okay. Let me ask you a yes. question. These I'll statements, the these statements yeah. by the president. Yes that the NDC needs to come back to create loot and share, and that they are just spreading falsehood. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, he has a state to govern, he has two years to go, he's mm -hmm. made promises that people are hoping. Do we need these statements at this time? That's my specific question. Yes. We need the statements. We need it coming because of the backdrop of the people that it is coming from and where these attacks are coming okay. from. You need to be able to contextualize and find out that if these individuals are actually saying these things by virtue of the fact that they are genuinely interested in the management or running the affairs of this country. Okay. But if it's coming, it's like taking uh, pot, uh, 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 what do you call it, the pot, actually, uh, moral lessons from uh, the, the brothel. That is exactly mm. what it is. Okay. Now, NDC had pretended over an economy. That, that my point I was trying to make, okay. essentially, had pretended over an economy that they had to take us to the IMF mm. initially to seek a so-called policy credibility. Okay. It ended, that, ended up that we had to actually go for a full bailout. Okay. The conditions, the unemployment, okay. the conditionalities that uh, were attached mm. to it, the five five, six, seven years of young people who had left universities who did not have any jobs, okay. had been activated, right. had been stemmed. I think your point is well made. You have had enough time. No, no, but you, let, no, let, no, you let, agree. Let, you let, agree let, about let, enough time. Let, 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 okay. let, 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 Finally. Jenny, oh. Jenny. No, no, let, 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 Miriam has to read comments. 30 seconds. 30 uh, Eric. seconds. Hey, you don't need 30 seconds. I'm saying, I'm oh. saying that. Let, all let's of this thing, allow more. The young people, the 100,000 young people, who did not graduate okay. under oh, the watch oh, of thank President Akufo. But one minute I've for you, Miriam is standing by. One minute for you. Apple. It's only fair I give you one you minute. See, Johnny, I'm not sure Eric would, would ever land if, if you allow him. Mm. A simple question. Mm. Do we need such reckless statements? From the you call the statement reckless? reckless statements. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, reckless statements. No, but is it, and you can it, answer uh, this. Yeah, you have I taken over 15 minutes. I am saying that the president minutes. has every oh, single Eric, right Eric, to respond I'm sure, I'm sure, in equal measure. I'm sure measure. you advise me. No, yes. You advise me exactly. not to Do you spoil in equal measure? Especially now, coming see, from you. I allow him, Eric. You see, he allowed you. When you are asked a simple mm. question about a statement made by the president, okay. and you go to talk about the National Delegates Conference of the NDC, mm. make references to uh, Akamba uh, homegrown policies, how do they relate to these things? That is the shallow mindedness that you see in the MPP. That's, it's, it's that's, that's also not fair. <laughs> it is. No, you well, well, coming it's from you, no, I'm you see, coming you see, from you. you. Eric, it's also Eric, fine. Fair. I'll well, take it well, as a compliment. Well, well, uh, well, 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 if you're offended, everybody is watching this. Would, would, if, would if, know, if you're offended, if you're offended, you know who is actually see, showing shallow uh, Johnny, mindedness on this platform. How does a simple question about the statement of the president? Relate to the NDC National Delegates Conference. Okay. You can set your own questions and proceed to answer them. Great. I, 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 want to make, I want to make a very loud statement on your, on your platform. It has to he be has 10 indicated, seconds. Mm. He has indicated that there's no constituency okay. that we don't have the IPEC projects 
ongoing district. Mm. In fact, yes. well, all my constituency is a district. All right. I have seen the 2019 budget. I have okay. gone through. Okay. They have listed projects that they have done in my constituency. Right. They are talking about 10 dams okay. and dugouts mm. having been constructed. Right. Water projects on your platform. And that's what I am willing okay. mm, to pay for the air tickets of the minister responsible for special initiatives okay. and the minister for finance okay. and at least your station mm. to go to my constituency to see if they have done mm. a resemblance of what they have claimed to have done. Not what they have done. There's nothing. And there's well, nothing. Okay. I am willing Thank to you. pay for your effort to may, go and may confirm I, may that I have done nothing is standing in my by. She has all like the messages public. you've been sending. May I take it away? Right, so let's get some comments from our WhatsApp platform. This one here says, good morning. Have you seen how difficult, uh, I think he wants to say, for, it is for this government to solve the little challenges we are going through in power? This government claims that they have solved doom so now. They're naked. This power of fluctuation, I think he wants to say, has exposed them. Kudos to the President Mohammed to take bold decisions to solve Dumso. Um, if not the President, ex-President, you want to say, uh, we have, we're still in Dumso. It's coming from Kwache Kronum. Another from uh, Sofo Yamusa in Kumbungu says, Ghanaians should be grateful to Nanado led MPP government for sustaining uninterrupted power supply for close to two years. At least, if for nothing at all, the MPP government has the clue in resolving power crisis. Now, NDC in opposition has come to terms with the vice president that the power issue has to do with financial. Right. The next one says, a president exercises his constitutional mandate. Then some people out of hatred for him or because of dirty politics go to court challenging him for doing so. To me, such people have serious problems and so need deliverance. As Sansko from Santa Maria with that. The next one says, Morning TV3, I am sad to hear that the government is not going to aid in the payment of the men's gold saga. But I'm happy that for once... Uh, they have come out to tell the citizens the truth. The over-promising and under-delivering is catching up with them. God bless our mother Ghana, Azuma Kusi Paul from Bolga. John, uh, Johnny said, Johnny, you're always looking outstanding with your grandpa collection and, and so passionate with the issues concerning the country. Uh, keep up is coming from Azuma once again. Good evening. I think this is a message that came in maybe yesterday or maybe got the greeting wrong. Good evening, TV3. Thank God it's Friday. Please, I wish you could come to a palm roundabout going to GN Bank and the gutters in front of the chief fisherman residence at Ofeni Kweja Avenue. The, the, the gutters are not 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 and people are selling food there uh, we should come together and keep our gutters clean was was yeah was yeah yeah was yeah no okay maybe i'm not getting my fancy right <laughs> was it aye you know uh okay right i, I might want to have to skip that and the last one here says good morning um jh1 johnny hughes i, d I do not understand this tax identification number that all parents must have before their children can benefit from the free SHS. If they do not want the poor to enjoy the free SHS, they should tell us and even try uh, and even tired of this government today, this morning. It's coming from Kai Jesus in Mankwaze, Gumwa West. So that's some of the feedback we have on our WhatsApp platform at the moment. Back to you, John Hughes. Filth, despair, neglect, deterioration, ticking time bomb. These words perfectly describe the current situation of the twin slums of Nima and Mamubi, arguably two of the most famous Zango communities in Ghana. Their story is not a pleasant one, even in the 21st century. Nima presents a jaw-dropping view of a packed decrepit, haphazard, and unplanned housing units inhabited by impoverished people. Their needs are enormous, but the insufficient supply of shelter, water, electricity, employment, security, and good drainage system tops the wish list. These conditions have persisted since the early days, but haven't impeded her daily expansion. 
So, she continues to play host to a large number of rural urban migrants from Ghana and parts of West Africa in an overwhelming fashion. Culture, religion, and tribal unity in diversity presents a delightful example of peaceful coexistence in the midst of all this killer. Nima and Mamubi are strategically placed in close proximity to the Flagstaff House, the seat of government. In fact, Ghana's president, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, has repeatedly mentioned how he was raised in this vicinity and how he still keeps his Nima residence. But right in the center of these two communities lies the infamous Nima Gata project that serves as a boundary for the Ayawaso East and North constituencies. It travels about 1.2. Back to Nima today. The 3FM uh, community connect team is out there. will be on your screens shortly as well. And the uh, hashtag we're using is community connect hashtag Nima Gata. Throw it to my guest now. Chief, I'll start with you, Eric. This is the situation we have at Nima. A gata that's supposed to save the people. It brought a lot of hope to them. It's now become an albatross and a death trap, if you will. Where do we go from here? Well, um Looking at these pictures, uh, there's absolutely uh, no reason why in, in this day and age uh, any people should live um, in conditions like this. Mm. And I think that that is really one of the major reasons why the president had the conviction of setting up the Zongo uh, ministry, okay. the inner city mm. ministry, to, as it were, tackle some of these things said on. Um, a lot of people have even asked the question, why was there a need for that? But okay. the thing is that uh, we're coming from a, a point where we've been doing this thing in a particular manner for a very long time. Mm. And we don't seem to have any uh, tangible uh, results. Okay. Uh, and so for me, this approach is one that would essentially focus on key things that would affect the Zongo communities and mm. the inner communities. I know that quite a lot of work has been done. Mm. Um, in terms of the, 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 the gutters itself, I don't know if it falls under the jurisdiction of the, 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 the last time I spoke with of the uh, minister. Uh, Mr. Uh, Alaji uh, yes, Sadiq, while he was there, yeah. the last time I had a conversation with him about the Nimaga, because I, I, President Mills picked it up again, mm -hmm and his travels through President Muhammad's time is missed as three deadlines already. Mm -hmm. And so they were hoping that we would continue it. Elijah promised that, well, we could get some work done on it. Yeah, but so that was the last we heard in 2017. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That The good news is that uh, there are, even with the, in the last budget, the uh, promise and the conviction to work on some 50 or so bridges okay. and Mm. do some works in the, the drainage mm -hmm. and the hydrology side of things, especially within our, uh, our cities. Um, I don't have some clarity in terms of if that is part of it. But again, it is not just a gutter issue. You, okay. you look at it from a, an, even an environmental health, sta health standpoint where mm. uh, you see all the debris and the, the plastic mm. and all of those things, right? And what it does, even though as we speak, it, pres it looks at something that is almost... Uh, it's done, uh, it's uh, almost done. It's, 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 a, it's a hopeless case. Mm. That itself presents an opportunity for some kind of recycling uh, activity to go on. Mm. People are doing fantastic do, things. Do the like people at Nima need to recycle their minds first mm -hmm. before they start talking about recycling No, but the plastics. thing is, it's a, you, see, you become almost like a, a function or a victim of the environment that okay. you, you, you find yourself mm. in. So it's a plethora of issues. And right. you've also realized that it's a vicious cycle. Mm. There's, uh, there's inadequate uh, uh, planning or a lack of planning in mm. the vicinity mm. to start with. What it means is that how do you find proper uh, okay. channels or roads or whatever to be able to do this thing? Are you able to put uh, dustbins or even if the, the, the refuse or garbage are uh, put somewhere, are you able to find a way of actually getting it out of those areas and all of those things? Okay. So it's a function of how the area has grown mm. because it, for most slums and inner city areas around the world, mm. it, and this is not just peculiar to, to, to Ghana, mm. almost every part of the world you go, you find that these are areas where because 
it started off as an offshoot of okay. uh, a, a, a wrap up for me. Let that uh, was not planned. Have you have answer. some of these issues, yeah. but it has to be dealt with. I like the conviction of a president to refocus on that. Except Listen. to say that we have not seen the tangible. No, no, but you see, you can say that, but as you just said, these are but, but this, this, the this, this, no, the these things the actually has overlapped three or so or four various precedents, right? right? right. So it started as far back as uh, President Rawlings, Rawlings actually, time, it's gone through and it's President Rawlings, all President so, yes. yeah, so we have to take a decisive action mm -hmm. and deal with it. I mean, there's some of these things when it comes out, there are no excuses. We need to be able to deal with it. Right. But to be able to do so, mm -hmm. you also need all the various stakeholders, including the residents okay. themselves. Let Mo to have, be, I told our time is uh, up, so I'm grateful, up, Eric. Up for that. Grateful. Uh, yeah. Mo, you take a, a, a bite on this one quickly and let's wrap up. You said the project has... Uh, uh, it started seen. It started off under President Rawlings. It stopped. Uh, it didn't see any change until President Mills came. Then he constructed a 1.2 kilometer. It was left with a small junction and then the converse to continue co to, to, yeah. to connect with it from their homes. And that's where we are now. So it's been there since 2015 ish. And, and that's where we are. It is not too good a story for, for us as a country that uh, a simple issue of, of, of a good uh, drainage system mm. in that area of Accra, we are unable to fix it. You know, having started under President mm. Rollins. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a long time. And uh, uh, we can't be proud of such, of such a, a, a story. But mm. that is just a reflection of what happens in most areas in, in, in Accra. Uh, especially, mm. and we must be, we must be uh, uh, worried. Cleanliness, they say, is next to uh, mm. godliness. Okay. You see, the president declared that he wants to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Right. Whether the president is on the course to achieving that vision or not, eh, your guess is as good. Can as, he do as that man. alone? <laughs> he cannot, but he takes the lead. He's mm. the president of, of the. Republic. So what? Do you, what should he be doing? We should boots, take the lead with no. shovel and why the really? construction will require resources. Okay. It's only the president who would determine how he'd want to allocate resources. Mm. It's only the president who can decide on the priorities of, 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 mm. of our country. And so when the president talks about making a crowd, why, why couldn't the President Mahama finish it when he I, I missed <laughs> three deadlines? That's why I told you earlier mm. that it's not a good story. It has seen the pres it has seen President Rollins, President Kufo, mm. President Mills, and President Mahama. So mm. I've told you earlier that it is not a good story and that we cannot be proud of it as a country. Right. But I'm contexting that with the statement of the president that he wants to make Accra the cleanest city okay. in Africa. Mm. Why? Well, you cannot do that when, when, when for instance, mm, you don't pay contractors mm. who are no, engaged in... Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. okay. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up the Eric, conversation. No, it, it, no, no, Eric, but these contractors that you are talking Eric, about... Yeah, we're right. going. Okay. Thank you very much. Eric no, Chum is a member of this the NPP's fair. communication this team is and uh, Mohammed Abdulaziz. You have not been fair to me on this. No, no. Oh, I have been you fair have to you. I have not been fair to me on this. I've been fair. I've been fair. That, that, that Eric but got, you, you have got almost 10 minutes on this matter. Okay. I so, sat down, watched him, and when he got to my turn, mm. he interjected. We're, we're going to Nima, and uh, we, we're going to Nima. Honorable Mohammed Abdulaziz is. It's trying to play politics with a matter that's of social no. concern to the people no. of Lima. No. I want the issue no. solved out no. there. No. So let's say good morning to Honorable right. uh, Jaja there at the, the yeah the Ayawaso North, right. and then the Honorable uh, Nasa Mahama Turi Ayawaso East. We're coming to your constituency this Budget morning. Hashtag Nima Gata. We're coming there. After the break, there's more here on New Day. I would have